welcome back to the Ocheap channel, the channel dedicated to all things cheap and water fragrances. In today's video, I just wanted to quickly go through what I consider my rack store treasures, things that I found like the diamond in the rough, the time after time going to rack store almost week after week, and you find something very different, unique. It could be something that's a high quality for a good price or just something that you don't see every day or maybe even something that I was looking for somewhere else and I just found it out of nowhere at one of these rack stores. And by rack stores, I mean stores like TJ Maxx, Ross, Marshalls, or Burlington, but I think these I've found mostly either at TJ Maxx or Ross. But let's go ahead and get into it and talk about the first one here, which is this one, Moschino's Toy Boy. So if you've been in the Franks community for any amount of time, you've no doubt heard or seen about this one as being one that is almost considered niche quality for a cheap price. It is a very floral dominant fragrance with notes like rose and magnolia. Then you get spices like nutmeg and clove and pink pepper and a good bit of woodiness with sandalwood. You get some Haitian vetiver in there as well. So a floral spicy woods fragrance. And this is actually a masculine marketed fragrance, even though it is so floral dominant, which makes it a very different designer take on a man's cologne, makes it very unique, very stand out among anything else that you'd find. It's not like the blue fragrances you'd see, not like the aquatics, the freshies, or even the sweet kind of fragrances. Very off the beaten path, very new vision for Moschino to try to market something like this for men. But I think it is more unisex leading because it was floral, so either guys or girls could wear it. Has amazing performance, very, very loud, way above average, and longevity I think is within that nine to 10 hour range with a medium projection, so very good in that department. So I have already talked about this one before in my winter cheapies video of last year in 2023, and I talked about my story of how I found it and why I thought it was a good buy, but I'll go ahead and reiterate that now. But why I consider this a rack store treasure is because I was looking for this one for a while, and I looked at discounters and the price didn't seem like it was low enough for what I was looking for, but I did really want it. I smelled it in store, I really liked it, but I didn't wanna pay full retail for it. But I found this 30 ml bottle at a Ross for $26.99, which was way even cheaper than what I've seen for that size at discounters online. So not only was it cheaper than what I saw at discounters, but that price for the quality that I got out of this was just unprecedented. I absolutely enjoy this. I do think it's reaching up in that niche kind of scent profile. Again, not something that you would normally think would be a masculine marketed fragrance, but I do appreciate that Moschino tried something different way outside the box, and I think it really pays off because this is a really, really good one. I highly recommend for anyone to go out there and try to find it, and if you do find a rack store for that price, don't hesitate to pick it up. But the first one is this, Moschino's Toy Boy. Now going to the second one, which is actually one that was released last year in 2023. So when I saw it at a rack store already midway in the year, I was super surprised, especially for the price that I picked it up at. It is this one here, Lacoste L1212 Blanc O Intense. So Lacoste is well known in their fragrances for being something that is very fresh, very bright, easy to wear, and more forward and focused in the summer and springtime, the warmer weather. They're seen as like a quintessential golf fragrance. Like if you took the whole idea of golf and juice it down and put it in a fragrance bottle, that's exactly what all their fragrances smell like. They are usually very good quality too for what you're picking up. So this comes across very bright and citric and spicy. There's a nice turmeric note in here, getting very green, herbaceous and aromatic, some clary sage, a little soapy with some lavender, and it dries down with a good bit of vetiver and a little bit of a leather background. It's not too noticeable, but if you spray enough of it on, you do kind of feel that leather in the background and a little bit of a woodiness, some nice soft sandalwood in there as well. So very, very easy to wear, very classy, very masculine, very smooth, well blended, has actually better performance than you'd think with the freshie, especially as it's drying down, you get a lot of those base and mids that last very well. I say overall, pretty average performance, you know, nice projection, a little medium, and a nice maybe six to seven hour longevity, depending on how you wear it 
through the day. So still not bad for a freshie. And if you know Lacoste, you know a lot of the stuff might not last too long. So that's saying pretty good with this one. And why I consider this a drag store treasure is because like I said, this was released last year in 2023. And I found it midway in last year at a rack store for the cheapest price I've seen it at. So I think at the time, even at online discounters, a 100 mil bottle was running like $80. And I found this for $39.99 at a Ross. So absolutely unheard of. I was super surprised and I just had to pick it up immediately because I knew I was not going to find that deal anywhere else. And even since then, I don't think I've seen this one pop up at a rack store yet. So I'm glad that I got it. Super good quality and maybe even cheaper at discounters now. So if you do find it, for a lower price around that $40 range, I'd definitely say pick it up and trying it out. Perfect for spring, summer, casual, office, sportwear. I highly suggest trying this out if you get the chance. It's Lacoste L1212 Blanc O Intense. Now going into the third one, and it's one that I did a community post on talking about, but again, I haven't talked about it in a video, and I think it's very appropriate for the Rack Store Treasures. It is this one here, Ralph Lauren Polo Earth. So Polo Earth is a line of fragrances that you really don't see talked about a whole lot. It really flies under the radar compared to everything else that Ralph Lauren has, especially their Polo Bloom line, Polo Red line, and most popular now, the Ralph's Club line. These all are ones that are more naturally sourced. They really brag about that in the box. The box is made from recycled materials and the bottles are, the caps are wooden, which is really nice. And uh, they say on the inside of the label here that it's 97% natural origin ingredients. So when you get this, you're expecting it to be a lot more naturals in it than you would any other fragrances, which is nice to have that expectation. You're like, well, this is gonna be really good quality then. And I gotta say, it really is more natural smelling. This is a very white and yellow floral dominant fragrance. Very nice, bright and juicy citrus on the top. And you do get a little bit of a woodiness underneath and a little bit of some aromatics, but the florals are what you get the most out of this. Things like neroli and orange blossom and ylang, -ylang and geranium. It is like a floral bomb, but it is very realistic and very natural smelling. It'll give you reminiscence of things like Neroli Portofino by Tom Ford or Eau Sauvage by Christian Dior. And even me personally, I think it reminds me a lot of Zerzhov's Torino 23, which wasn't a very big hit because of the floral components in that, but it very much matches the same kind of quality and style that's in this one here. Perfect for the spring and summertime. It has a good bit of classiness to it, so I think It'd be good for the office, good for casual outings or gatherings, or just wanting to chill at home. I think it's perfect for that. Very soft, calming, relaxing, but yet still bright and uplifting at the same time. Not the best performing though, and that's kind of be expected because this is a very fresh fragrance. You're gonna think it dies off very quick, and it does, but I think it depends on how you wear it, if you're inside or out, or how warm you are and how you go through the day. It may last a little longer, but for me personally, it's uh, about average, a little below in projection, and longevity is probably around like four hours or so. It does dry down to being something that's very nice on the skin, a good skin scent, and you do get a very soapy yellow floral dry down. So if you don't like florals, you definitely well, not like this. And because of that scent profile, I think it is a very good unisex fragrance. The aromatics and the woodiness might make it a little more masculine leaning, but I think if you like this and you're a girl, I think you could definitely wear this. But like I said, I found this with the red TJ Maxx tag on it, meaning that someone returned it after opening it. And I actually was able to get this little thing for about $29.99, maybe a little less than that. So really, really good. It was a amazing buy. I really didn't know what to expect with it. And even though I wasn't a huge floral fan at first, I think this one kind of turned me over to it because I really did like how this came across. It was just very old money, classy kind of style, like a tea party in the spring and you're the best dressed guy there in your white linens or seersucker. It just has that whole vibe about it. Really, really good. I definitely recommend picking this up if you get the chance. I've seen it, like I said, at TJ Maxx and even some at Ross. So if you find it for around or under that $40 mark, I definitely would say go and pick this up if any of that sounds good to you. It is this one, Polo Earth. 
Now on to the fourth one, and it is actually the one that inspired me to get this whole list together in the first place. And I didn't know what to think about this one when I was getting it, but I really do appreciate it now for being so unique and so different and how it stands out in my collection. It is this one here from Hermes. It is L'Ombre des Merveilles. Yes, it is the small bottle, but still it's considered owning the fragrance. It is a very unique looking bottle, by the way. It has a flat back with some stars on it, but when you look at it through the front, it looks like it's kind of in the distance or like in a globe kind of look with a gradient on it. And you see the name of the fragrance on the top of it. And it has two flat bottoms, so it can sit two different ways, but it's still crooked whichever way it sits. So a very unique bottle, and it's very fitting because of how unique of a fragrance it is. So this has a very simple note breakdown of black tea, incense, and tonka beans. So when you smell it, it's gonna immediately come across a little herbaceous with that black tea, a little smoky with the incense, a little ambery balsamic kind of powderiness encompassing with that tonka bean. Not so, so sweet. And maybe as it gets further down into the fragrance, there's a slight bit of sweetness, but it pretty much stays almost a dry, Kind of fragrance all the way through very very unique a good bit of a muskiness in there as well but it has a unique facet where it can be either a cool fragrance or a warm fragrance depending on how you're wearing it and in what season it's almost a little fresh but also a little dark so a little complicated but also a little simple at the same time it is definitely not like anything else that i own in my collection and i gotta say when i first got it and started smelling it i didn't know what to think i kind of liked it because of how unique it was but kind of didn't like it because i didn't know how or when i could wear it i honestly thought that the first bit of that musky balsamic smokiness kind of smelled like old man breath if you know what i mean then you'll know when you smell this one if you ever get the chance to smell it what i mean by that it is just so different maybe that's the black tea note that herbaceous quality like some men that i've smelled that had certain kind of breath mints or tobacco maybe it had that kind of mixture with it so doesn't sound appealing at first but once you get past that opening and it starts drying down it does get a little more nuanced and unique and it's just something that i'm even though i don't know when i'd wear it i'm glad that i have it because of how different it is and considering that I picked this up for only like $26 or $29.99 for this little bottle, I think this is an Hermes's kind of higher end designer line, almost niche kind of thing. It definitely has a niche quality to it because of how unique it is. It is perfectly unisex, either guys or girls could wear it. And I think it's almost all year long wearability, any season, any time of the day, it'll be fresh where you want it to be fresh. It'll be dark, smoky, and ambery when you want it to be on that darker side. It's just so unique and different. I really have no way of explaining what it's like. And that's why I had to have it in this list and why it inspired me to make the list in the first place. It is something that I don't know when I'll wear it, but I will definitely try to find situations, even if it's just me at home, to wear this one. So if you get the chance and you're out and about, maybe even at TJ Maxx, like where I found this one, and you see it, and you find it for a good price, just try it out and see what you think. And if you get it and you don't like it, you can just do like the person did before I got this one and return it for someone else. But still, I appreciate it for what it is, and I'm very glad to have it in my collection. It is Hermes L'Ombre de la Vie. Now on to the fifth and last one in this list, and it's one I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on because it's actually my most recent pickup out of all these here. And you actually probably see me talk about this one if you watched my Rack Store haul video where I blind bought this and opened it up on camera for the first time. And in case you haven't seen that video, definitely go watch it. But while you're here, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it real quick. It is this one here. It is Commodity Vetiver. So the Commodity brand and line of fragrances is a specific brand of Sephora, almost like their own brand. So technically you could say it's a niche kind of niche brand in a way. And so when I found this one at Ross for just $29.99, I immediately had to pick it up. I've seen commodity fragrances before, smelled them in person at Sephora. I even own a travel size of one of them called Moss Plus that I really like. 
And I've seen Kamani Vetiver around before, but never picked it up. But when I saw this one at Ross, I thought about it, left it, came back a week later and it was still there. So I immediately picked it up because I knew I wouldn't be able to find it again, especially for that price. So if you saw my video when I talked about this and Blind reacted to it, it was a very interesting way I used to describe it, but I'll go ahead and talk about it. So what you're gonna get with this is something that is a little fruity with a blackberry note, very floral, a little fresh, almost dewy, a little bit green, herbaceous. You do get that vetiver in the background, but it's not like a heavy, earthy, kind of dirty vetiver. It's very clean, a very green, like I said, aromatic, and a little bit of a woodiness underlying everything. But majority of what I got out of this personally is that blackberry fruitiness, the florals, and the greenness in this. It's not gonna be something like you would expect with things like Encre Noir Sport or any of the Encre Noir line or Grey Vetiver or any of those very nice, smooth, spicy, you know, clean vetiver ones. It's very, very different with that. I actually originally described this one as having a Sharpie or magic marker kind of smell because of the way the blackberry came across and everything else, but it does smooth down more on the skin. It does get more of that grassy kind of vetiver. Like I said, it has like a dewy, watery freshness to it and a little bit underlying, like I said, woodiness. It is definitely very unique. I would say definitely a niche quality because of how different it is, especially compared to what I was expecting out of it. I think the preferred season would be spring with this, but you can still wear it easily in the summer and fall time. I think winter may be a little too cold with it. Good for, you know, casual outings out and about, maybe even classy formal gatherings if you spray very lightly. This is a very nice performer, by the way. Very, very loud on that first opening, maybe like an hour and a half or so. And longevity, as far as what I've tested so far, is in that seven to eight hour range. So average, maybe a little above average. So not bad at all. Definitely super unique. And I think, no. Definitely super unique, and I think the Kamadi line overall is a very unique line. Uh, no. No. Definitely a very unique, way out there kind of style. Not really what you'd expect when you see Vetiver, and definitely not what I expected, but the Kamadi line has a lot of unique finds. So if you see any of the Kamadi line while you're out and about at rack stores for that, $29, $30 price range, I wouldn't hesitate to pick it up, honestly, especially with me. Now I'm trying to collect more of these. I'd pick it up right then and there. But if you do pick them up, let me know what you think about them. But I definitely say Vetiver is going to be a unique one. If you get a chance to sample it in store first, I would do that and then go out and try to find it at a rack store or at an online discounter. But not bad at all. It's, like I said, very unique. It is a treasure. It stands out among even these I have here and out of all my collection, and I'm still happy to have it and to try it out. But that is the last one I had to talk about here. It is Commodity Vetiver. And here they are, guys, my rack store treasures that I have thus far. Maybe I'll make this an annual thing year to year, depending on how much more I pick up. And if I do, I will keep you updated, of course, and let you know. I might even be posting them on my community posts like I've done for most of these. Some of these are way more wearable than others. They're still unique, but they're ones that are probably gonna have more of a nuance or a situational kind of deal to them that you have to be in the right place, right time, or just be in the mood to wear it, if you know what I mean. But all of these are super good quality, great blends, great houses. And that's why I consider these treasures because I paid very little for a lot of quality and things that are more unique that stand out in my collection and I really do enjoy these and I always try to find a chance to wear these when I can. Let me know what you think about these. Do you own any of these? Have you seen these out and about but you didn't know about buying them and now maybe you'll go out there and try them out? Or even what do you have that you consider a rack store treasure? That's not something that you would be, you know, all the clones, like the milestone things or the Middle Eastern fragrance clones or the usual that you see out and about, but things that are way different, way off that you found out and about at a rack store and you're like, hey, I haven't seen that before, I'm gonna try it out. Let me know down in the comments below all about it. I love hearing from you guys and I love being able to read your comments 
any reactions and I try to react and then comment back to you when I can. I love that community, I love the communication and I wanna keep that going as long as I can. And if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and supporting the channel. There's a lot of things I have planned and I love to have you along with me and maybe I can help you discover something new along the way. And as usual, guys, that's all I have for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you again for being here along with me, and I will see all of you again in the next video. Be blessed.